Hello everyone. This is Semi Sherpa, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of artificial intelligence, with a special focus on neural network algorithms and accelerators. Join me as we unravel the mysteries of these cutting edge technologies and explore how they're revolutionizing the way we live, work, and interact. So sit back, relax, and get ready to embark on an exciting journey into the realm of AI. Let's get started. The story of artificial intelligence is closely tied to the familiar figure of Alan Turing, who many of us know from the movie The Imitation Game. Turing was a brilliant British mathematician, who played a crucial role in decrypting German military codes during World War II. He also contributed to the development of the first computer. Despite his remarkable achievements, Turing tragically faced persecution due to his homosexuality leading to an unfortunate end to his life. Turing's work in AI is exemplified by his proposal of the famous Turing test. This test is designed to determine whether a machine is capable of thinking by examining its ability to imitate human-like intelligence. The imitation game, as a movie, brings to life Alan Turing's story, showcasing his groundbreaking work in AI and highlighting the personal struggles he faced. The imitation game is a simple yet thought-provoking test to determine if a machine can exhibit intelligent behavior indistinguishable from that of a human. In this test, a human judge engages in a text-based conversation with two participants, a human and a machine. The judge's task is to determine which participant is the machine. If the judge is unable to reliably distinguish between the human and the machine, the machine is said to have passed the Turing test demonstrating human-like intelligence. This test sparked a critical debate about the nature of intelligence and the possibility of creating machines that could think and learn like humans. The imitation game remains a fascinating and influential concept in AI research, driving scientists and engineers to develop increasingly advanced artificial intelligence systems. Following Turing's groundbreaking work in artificial intelligence, the concept of neural networks started to take shape. Inspired by the structure and function of the human brain, researchers began to explore the possibility of creating artificial systems that could learn and adapt. In 1943, Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitts introduced the first mathematical model of an artificial neuron, marking the beginning of neural network research. Their work laid the foundation for understanding how neurons could be interconnected to form a network and perform complex computations. Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitt's work on artificial neurons was groundbreaking, as it laid the foundation for the development of neural networks. Their 1943 paper, titled, A Logical Calculus of the Ideas Imminent in Nervous Activity, presented a simplified, mathematical model of a biological neuron that could perform basic logical functions. In their model, neurons received binary inputs, either a zero or a one, from other neurons via weighted connections called synapses. The neuron would then process the inputs by summing the products of the inputs and their corresponding weights. If the total sum exceeded a certain threshold, the neuron would fire, producing an output of one, otherwise, the output would be zero. McCulloch and Pitts pioneered a model for artificial neurons, asserting that it could perform basic logic functions like AND and OR, fundamental to digital computing. An illustration of OR logic, for example, is when a neuron fires an output if either of its inputs is active, embodying the binary OR operation. This can be achieved by setting the neuron's activation threshold to zero, and assigning each input, X and Y, a weight of 1.5, indicating their influence. Hence, the neuron would activate if either X or Y were 1, as the cumulative weighted input would exceed the threshold, causing the neuron to fire an output. In essence, McCulloch and Pitts's work was key in showing how even simple models of biological neurons could mimic basic logical operations, laying the groundwork for modern artificial neural networks. After the pioneering work of McCulloch and Pitts, the next significant milestone was the introduction of the perceptron by Frank Rosenblatt in 1958. Frank Rosenblatt's perceptron was an early model of an artificial neuron that utilized a simple learning algorithm to recognize patterns. It was a single-layer neural network that could classify linearly separable patterns through supervised learning. 
the perceptron adjusted its weights based on the errors it made during the learning process, enabling it to adapt and improve its performance. The aim of a perceptron is to classify input data according to learned weights and biases. When we're training a perceptron, we're essentially adjusting these weights and biases based on the input we provide, so it can make accurate predictions on new, unseen data. Let's take an example where we're trying to determine whether an image is of a cat or a dog based on three characteristics, ears, nose, and eyes. 1. Initialize the weights and bias. At the start, the perceptron has no idea about what weights to assign to each characteristic, ears, nose, and eyes, so it initializes the weights and bias randomly. 2. Feed the input. We give the perceptron an image, let's say, an image of a cat, and it takes the input, features such as ears, nose, and eyes, and multiplies each input with its corresponding weight. 3. Calculate net input. The perceptron then sums up the products of these inputs and weights, adds the bias, and passes this sum through an activation function, like a step function. The output will be either 1, dog, or 0, cat, depending on whether the total is greater or lesser than a certain threshold. 4. Adjust weights and bias. If the perceptron incorrectly classifies the image, say, it predicted dog when it was a cat, it will adjust the weights and bias. This is done using a learning algorithm, like the perceptron learning algorithm, which is a type of supervised learning. The algorithm adjusts the weights and biases based on the error, which is the difference between the actual output and the expected output. 5. Iterate the process. We repeat steps 2 to 4 for each image in our training data, typically multiple times. Each cycle through all of the training data is known as an epoch. With each epoch, the perceptron should get better at distinguishing cats from dogs based on the features of ears, nose, and eyes. After training, you can present a new image to the perceptron. It will use the learned weights and bias to predict whether the image is a cat or a dog based on the features of ears, nose, and eyes. If it's been trained well, it should be quite accurate in its prediction. In the formative years of neural networks, researchers frequently demonstrated their work to validate and promote it. A noteworthy example is Frank Rosenblatt's Mark I perceptron machine showcased at the Cornell Aeronautical Laboratory in 1958. This remarkable machine was devised to discern simple visual patterns, such as geometric figures and alphabets, by learning through a series of training examples. Rosenblatt had such profound confidence in the potential of the perceptron as a stepping stone towards genuine artificial intelligence, that he famously proclaimed in 1959, the perceptron is, the embryo of an electronic computer that, the Navy, expects will be able to walk, talk, see, write, reproduce itself and be conscious of its existence. Marvin Minsky, often hailed as one of the forefathers of AI, began to scrutinize the limitations of Rosenblatt's perceptron. Minsky observed that while the machine was capable of distinguishing E's from F's or 5's from 6's, its recognition abilities crumbled when faced with stimuli unrelated to these figures. Teaming up with the double PhD holder Seymour Papert, Minsky co authored a book titled Perceptrons which effectively halted the progress of perceptrons and the budding concept of neural nets. They asserted that the perceptron was not only incapable of learning the simple exclusive or exo-off function but also theoretically could never learn it, regardless of the training duration. Single-layer perceptrons, initially promising, soon demonstrated significant limitations in addressing complex problems, particularly exemplified by the exo -or problem. exo -or or exclusive or, is a straightforward logical function that yields true only when its dual inputs differ. For example, imagine the everyday situation of selecting between two elevators, left or right. This decision embodies an XOR operation, as you choose either the left or the right elevator but not both. 
If both or neither options are chosen, the XOR operation fails. Yet, by picking either the left or right elevator, an XOR operation is effectively executed. Early neural network models, including the single-layer perceptron, demonstrated capabilities only to solve linearly separable problems. They could correctly classify data points where a straight line, or linear decision boundary, segregated various classes. However, numerous real-world problems aren't linearly separable, and their decision boundaries are more intricate and nonlinear. The XOR, exclusive or problem offers a quintessential instance of such a nonlinear problem that single-layer neural networks, such as the perceptron, can't decipher. The repercussions of Minsky and Papert's critique were enormous, culminating in a pivotal shift in AI research funding. It moved from neural networks towards alternatives such as rule-based systems and symbolic AI. Consequently, the period known as the AI winter marked a considerable decrease in the interest and financial backing for neural network research. Researchers wrestled with the constraints of existing models and the uphill task of developing more potent, multi-layered neural networks. Recognizing the need for a multi-layer perceptron, MLP, to surpass these limitations was crucial to the evolution of modern neural networks and the revitalization of interest in AI research. As Minsky's AI winter began to thaw, green shoots started sprouting in the neural network landscape. A key figure in this resurgence was Jeff Hinton, who completed his PhD in neural networks in 1978 and had moved to the Institute for Cognitive Science at UC San Diego by 1986. Along with David Rumelhart and Ronald Williams, Hinton published a landmark paper, Learning Representations by Backpropagating Errors. The trio demonstrated that neural networks with numerous hidden layers could be effectively trained using a relatively straightforward procedure. This innovation circumvented the perceptron's weakness, as these additional layers bestowed the network with the capability to learn nonlinear functions. Concurrently, it was revealed that such networks could learn any function, a discovery known as the universal approximation theorem. Consequently, the race for neural network dominance was back on. Backpropagation is a supervised learning method that fine-tunes multi-layer perceptrons, MLPs, by adjusting network weights to diminish the disparity between predicted and actual outputs. A loss function, computed at the output layer, quantifies this discrepancy. Initiated from the output layer and moving retrogressively through hidden layers, gradients are calculated. These gradients, combined with an optimization algorithm, are employed to revise the network's weights, thereby minimizing the loss function. This transformative algorithm, backpropagation, ushered in a wave of early accomplishments in the world of artificial intelligence and machine learning, particularly in the domain of convolutional neural networks, CNNs. Also known by the less phonetically friendly term, convnets, these specialized networks were crafted to effectively deal with grid-like data such as images, making significant strides in tasks involving visual recognition. A notable triumph of this era was the training of CNNs to recognize handwritten digits, a project that was vigorously led by Yen Lekin at at Ant Bell Labs. The convolutional network he built effectively dissected and analyzed digitized images of handwriting, enabling the system to identify numerical values from an assortment of handwritten styles and formats. This breakthrough fostered a significant evolution in the field of optical character recognition, OCR. The accompanying video provides a compelling glimpse into Lekin's pioneering work. It showcases a GIF of Lekin's convolutional network in action as it successfully deciphers the numerical value written on a check. This revolutionary application demonstrated the profound potential and versatility of CNNs, revolutionizing the way we perceive and leverage machine learning in day-to-day -day tasks. Despite the initial wave of excitement surrounding neural networks, researchers soon collided with a formidable wall of challenges when attempting to scale up these systems. The state of computational resources during this era was simply not advanced enough to manage the training of large, intricate neural network models. This scarcity of computational power inherently shackled the potential real-world applications of neural networks, subsequently impeding the progress within this burgeoning field of artificial intelligence. Simultaneously, alternative approaches to AI, 
such as expert systems and symbolic AI, were also starting to accumulate interest. These methodologies exhibited promise in certain domains, creating a shift in the research focus and a diversion of resources away from the exploration and development of neural networks. Over time, the inherent limitations and hurdles associated with both neural networks and alternative AI approaches started to unveil themselves. The initial euphoria surrounding the field of AI began to subside, gradually replaced by a sense of skepticism and disillusionment among researchers, the public, and the organizations providing financial support for these ventures. The chasm between the high expectations set for AI and the reality of its limitations contributed to a substantial reduction in funding for AI research, setting the stage for the onset of the second AI winter. The AI research revival post the second AI winter was driven by a synergy of factors. Advanced algorithms like support vector machines and recurrent neural networks emerged in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Concurrently, technological advancements boosted computational power, allowing for the training of complex neural network models. The surge of the internet and big data fueled data-driven AI algorithms, enabling sophisticated tasks such as image recognition and natural language processing. Lastly, tech giants like Google, Facebook, and Amazon started investing heavily in AI research and applications, accelerating advancements in the field. In 1997, an epical showdown transpired between IBM's Deep Blue, a chess-specific computer, and the reigning world chess champion Garry Kasparov, in New York City. Harnessing brute force search techniques and bespoke chess heuristics, Deep Blue evaluated positions and selected moves. Triumphing with a score of 3.5 to 2.5 points, Deep Blue recorded the first ever victory over a current world chess champion in a standard time control match. Deep Blue, IBM's chess prodigy, harnessed 30 parallel processors and 480 custom VLSI chess accelerator chips built specifically for chess playing. This unique architecture enabled the rapid search through millions of potential chess moves. With the capability of evaluating about 200 million positions per second, Deep Blue could look several steps ahead, identifying the optimal move for any given situation. The pivotal match between Deep Blue and Kasparov ignited an intense debate about the inherent potential of AI and its applicability to more indeterminate, real-world problems. This discourse was not without its own merit. It spurred researchers worldwide to challenge and expand the very horizons of AI. This renewed enthusiasm led to the subsequent invention of advanced AI systems that are not constrained to rigid rule-based tasks like chess. Modern AI systems have shown their prowess in myriad fields, from medical diagnosis to autonomous driving, natural language processing, and beyond. They can learn from and adapt to dynamic environments, making decisions under uncertainty, thus reflecting a stark departure from the deterministic approach of Deep Blue. Moreover, AI's evolution witnessed the emergence of machine learning, and more specifically, deep learning, drawing inspiration from human neural networks. These technologies enabled AI systems to learn from vast amounts of data, improving their performance without explicit programming. Within the broad spectrum of artificial intelligence, the emergence of convolutional neural networks, CNNs, and the Imaginet competition in 2012 marked crucial turning points in the evolution of deep learning and computer vision. The Imaginet Large Scale Visual Recognition Challenge, ILSVERC, an annual event drawing global participation, provides a competitive platform for teams to demonstrate the accuracy of their image recognition models. The battleground for this contest is Imaginet, a vast dataset featuring millions of labeled images spread across numerous object categories. This competition, over the years, has catalyzed significant advancements in the accuracy and efficiency of image recognition models, setting new benchmarks in the field of computer vision. These advances have been pivotal in numerous applications, from self-driving cars to medical imaging diagnostics, elevating the role of AI in our daily lives. It's also worth noting the role of CNNs in this competition. Their unique ability to extract features from images using filters and shared weights made them an ideal choice for this challenge. 
The 2012 competition was a breakout moment for CNNs when a model called Alex Net, using CNNs, won the challenge, significantly outperforming traditional machine learning approaches. The 2012 edition of the Imaginet Large Scale Visual Recognition Challenge, ILSVRC, heralded a dramatic shift in the computer vision field. A notable achievement came from the University of Toronto's team, spearheaded by Alex Krzyzewski, Ilya Sutskova, and Jeffrey Hinton. They innovated a convolutional neural network, CNN, model dubbed AlexNet, which outperformed competitors with a top 5 error rate of 15.3%. This significantly surpassed the second place team, who trailed with an error rate of 26.2%. This groundbreaking success of AlexNet not only illuminated the potency of CNNs in computer vision tasks but also ignited an intense interest in deep learning techniques across the AI community. The impact of their groundbreaking work did not go unrecognized. Yan Lekin, together with Jeffrey Hinton and Joshua Bengio, was bestowed the 2018 Turing Award, also known as the Nobel Prize of Computing, commemorating their invaluable contributions to the field of AI. The year 2016 marked another AI milestone with the advent of AlphaGo, a revolutionary Go playing AI developed by Google's DeepMind. AlphaGo captured global attention by defeating Lee Settle, a 9-dan professional and one of the world's top-ranked Go players, in a historic five-game match. Go, an ancient Chinese board game, is renowned for its immense complexity and the vast number of possible moves, a magnitude far beyond chess. This intricate nature of Go presented a formidable challenge to AI researchers as traditional brute force search methods which had been successful with chess playing eyes proved unsuitable for Go. Hence, the accomplishment of AlphaGo underlined a significant leap forward in the capabilities of artificial intelligence. AlphaGo, utilizing deep learning and reinforcement learning techniques, revolutionized the landscape of AI. By employing deep neural networks, particularly convolutional neural networks, CNNs, it interpreted Go board positions and predicted plausible moves. AlphaGo was honed through a blend of supervised learning from human expert matches and self-improvement via reinforcement learning. The historic match transpired in Seoul, South Korea, where AlphaGo triumphed over Lee Settle, winning four out of five games. This victory underscored AI's potential to address complex issues, once believed to be insurmountable for computers. The triumph of AlphaGo marked a remarkable stride in AI and deep learning, setting a new precedent in the AI domain. To further elaborate, the complexity of Go is staggering with an estimated 10 to the 160 possible board configurations compared to chess's 10 to the 50, which illustrates why AI's mastery of Go is an enormous accomplishment. ChatGPT, an AI marvel that many of us interact with, owes its existence to the pioneers at OpenAI with the influential entrepreneur Elon Musk playing a crucial role as a co-founder. Although Musk was not directly involved in the crafting of ChatGPT, his fervent commitment to propel artificial general intelligence was instrumental in setting the stage for ChatGPT's inception. The vision of OpenAI, combined with Musk's bold ideas about the future of AI, created an environment conducive to groundbreaking advancements in language processing models. ChatGPT stands as a testament to this pursuit of progress, showcasing the potential of AI when applied to communication and information processing tasks. ChatGPT, founded on the GPT, Generative Pre-trained Transformer, architecture, stands as a remarkable advancement in the realm of natural language processing, NLP. The GPT family of models, with its continual evolution starting from the original GPT-2, GPT-2, GPT-3, and beyond, is becoming increasingly influential in modern-day technology, showcasing an ability to generate text that is both contextually relevant and remarkably coherent. The core principle behind the GPT models is a two-step process involving pre-training and fine-tuning. The models undergo pre-training on colossal amounts of textual data, which empowers them to grasp the syntax and semantics of language, while also absorbing a wealth of general knowledge. Post pre-training, the models are further fine-tuned to excel in specific tasks, text summarization, translation, question answering, to name a few. 
The efficiency and scalability of this design have been pivotal in GPT models ascend to prominence in the NLP landscape. ChatGPT is specifically engineered to excel in generating detailed, contextually aware responses in dynamic conversational scenarios. Its potential use cases are vast, encompassing customer service, content generation, tutoring, and beyond. Despite the remarkable strides that ChatGPT has made in simulating human-like text generation, it's crucial to acknowledge its limitations. It can occasionally generate erroneous or absurd responses. The evolution of ChatGPT and similar AI language models underscores the rapid progress being made in the artificial intelligence landscape. With their persistent enhancements, these models are anticipated to have an increasingly profound impact on a plethora of industries and facets of everyday life. Thank you for tuning into this episode on AI history. We hope you enjoyed our journey through some of the pivotal moments and milestones that have shaped the field of artificial intelligence. Your support means a lot to us, so don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notification buttons to stay updated on our latest content. Stay tuned for our next episode, where we'll dive deeper into AI algorithms, applications, and the fascinating world of AI accelerator chips and memories. We'll explore how these cutting-edge technologies are driving advancements in various industries and shaping our future. Make sure you don't miss it. And once again, thank you for your continued support. Stay connected with Semi Slides for more exciting updates.